So it's good to see folks from all over the great state of Pennsylvania. And um, we have been doing programs of this nature for past on for almost, I think it's two years straight. So it's been an honor. Again, I'm not sure if anyone from who works with Pat Stone is on, but if not, we're just gonna roll with, you know, um, who we have. I'm a consultant, trainer, speaker. I've been doing my work now for 20 years, plus 20, 20 plus years. Uh, I love what I do. And we, you know, have had a chance to empower lots of people. I'm gonna pause for just one moment because I'm gonna, well, I think, because y'all have, give me a thumbs up or something if you can hear me okay, because I was looking at putting earbuds on to prevent background noise. But can you hear me okay now? If somebody can go to the emojis down there and maybe hit a thumbs up or something like that, let me know. Okay, good, Shannon. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yep, you know, yeah, in the chat feature. Very good. Thank you all so much. Good. All right. And um, so I've been doing this work a long time. I do want to share something with you if I can pull it up real fast here. Just real fast. There you can show me a little love when you see this, but um, I just celebrated 30 years of marriage. <laughs> there I am looking all cool in my, in my, uh... <laughs> thank you, Shannon. But yeah, my wife and I celebrated in Clearwater Beach, Florida with our four kids. And thank you. Thank you, Tamara. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's just a dream come true for me. I, I just, this was not my model growing up as a child. I, I didn't see it. Um, I grew up in the world and, you know, to no, no offense to the folk I grew up with, but it was, everyone was divorced and separated. But as a little boy, I made a commitment. And um, because I know for me, it was kind of, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Malika, I, believe, I really appreciate that. Nakai, I believe. I'm sorry, I don't mess your name up. Um, thank you. Um, I made a commitment that I was not going to do to my family what my dad did to ours. You know, I, I saw my mother really working hard to take care of her boys. And uh, for whatever reason, she and my dad broke up. And I used to, you know, I was not judgmental because I didn't know um, the reason because I was only one month old when they separated. But I do know that um, for me, um, I just didn't want that. So I said, when I get married, I'm just going to figure this thing out. <laughs> you know, it's not easy. Relationships, as y'all know, could be a challenge sometimes. But uh, I said, I'm going to stay married. And I have. And so my wife and I met in 1992. We got married in 1994. And we have four beautiful children, um, uh, three by birth and one via adoption. And I'm, I'm honored to be... Um, able to put this picture up here because this was a dream of mine for when I was a little kid. And so we were lucky enough to be able to do this in Clearwater Beach, Florida with friends and family from all over the country. And uh, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about my personal life and uh, it's something I'm proud of. So I want to do something real quick in the chat feature because that's what I'm proud of. But I want you to go to the chat feature, type in something you're proud of. I would just like to see some of the things you're proud of. It could be your children, it could be decisions that you made, whatever. What, what are you proud of? You know? And then we're going to talk about innovative job search strategies here in a few moments. But I just want to get to know you a little bit. You know, you, I just told you a little bit about me. You know, what are you proud of? You know, proud of, you know, something you accomplished? Or is it you know, proud of uh, something one of your children did? You know, and proud of um, completion of something? proud of a decision that you made, you know, what is something that you're proud of? My, so, there, you, there you go. That's what I'm looking at. Thank you for that. I'm proud of myself for not giving up. Yeah, even when things don't always look like that's it. You're right. Oh, wow. I'm my, my wife of 19 years and our six beautiful children. Way to go, Joseph. Job well done. There you go. There you go. Everyone has different things that they're proud of. It's, you know, just this is not a measurement of proud. We just, just something you're proud of personally. It could be anything. Thank you for you two for putting those in there. I'm sure others may have some thoughts, but um, I just want to start off this presentation by saying this. Always, and please, if you're a note taker, please 
take notes because again, I coach and train people all over the world. So when I say these things, it's coming from a position of heart, but also expertise as far as understanding mindsets and how our mind works. But always look for something every day, all right, to be proud of, all right? All right, I got it. I'm proud of my, my boys and being a good role model for my boys, okay? All right, very good. I love that. Got a hand up here? You want to share something with us? Uh, well, only because, sir, I, I'm having troubles uh, being able to um, write comments. But I just, uh, you pretty much, you took it out of my mouth. I'm, I'm proud of my two boys that I, that I take care That's of. That's okay. We, <laughs> we encourage this type of communication. So it's okay if you can't type it in the chat feature. You just want to say it. <laughs> okay, you know? thank you. You have, to, you have to apologize for that. that. That's what I want. I would rather people come off of mute and share. But a lot of folks, you know, put in the chat feature, and I'm okay with that, too. So I'm part of my boys. I'm part of myself and who I am. There you go. Yeah. And, I, and I'll say this to you. Never stop being proud of yourself. Listen, life is so full of ups and downs and sideways. You, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I've had to literally my entire life look for the positive in my life. If you're just coming on, please go and to pop into the chat feature. I've always had to look for the positive in my life. Always. Because there's so many negative things out here that want to pull us down. Negative words, negative people, negative perceptions that somebody have of us. I've dealt with that in my entire life. But I've never allowed it to stop me. And I want you to be the same thing. Ryan, that's good. I'm proud of myself. There you go. Be proud of yourself every day. You know what? I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'm going to show you something I do. I'm going to read some of them, okay? Because I just believe, and we're going to get to, I know some of you are coming in for job search. We're going to get to that in a moment. But those who know me know I'm about motivating folks too. And so um, I want to uh, share something I do every day. I got a list of things that I say about myself. Every single day, every day, I say, I am disciplined, I am focused, I am self-controlled, I am God-centered, I'm a loving husband, I'm a loving father, I, I, am, I, I am a leader and can lead people, I'm free from negative thinking, all these different things, I am worthy, I love myself deeply, I'm a caring person, you know, I am capable of great things. I am confident. I am creative. I'm healthy and happy. I am loved. I am worthy of respect and I believe in myself. There's not a day to go by that I don't say that every single morning. Because what I'm doing is pre-programming my mind to understand that no matter what happens in any given day, that's who I am. The day does not dictate who I am. I do. <laughs> and you do. And so that's a that's a foundational building block to achieving the things you want to achieve in your life. It starts with the way we think about ourselves. And so I see many of you have children in here and you're proud of them. You know, part of my motivation is really my children, my wife, my kids. And I, you know, when I don't feel up to it for myself, I fight for them. And I'm not feeling, you know, too good about Daryl. And, and, and what where Daryl is and all that, I, I just fight for them. And so so I have something to be proud of every day, y'all. And, um, and my hope is that during our time together, and I hope that we get more time beyond just this, you know, this session here, um, you know, uh, we can do some things together. So, and if any of you have any thoughts, just, you know, let me know. Um, I, you know, I see a hand up, but I think that's from the last time. So I don't think that's because of the need to share anything else, but... But I love this quote by Gandhi. And it says, Gandhi says this, it says, keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior become your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you something that I've done countless times sharing this particular slide. I'm going to remove the middle and I'm going to take the first and the last. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words and your words become your destiny. 
please write that down. My words become my destiny. I mentioned I'm in a shared space and it's about to get really loud in here. So let me put some earphones on. All right. Give me just one second. So you don't have to hear all this background. It's about to hit. All right. Just one second. Okay. Good. Can you hear me okay with these on? Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up or something like that. Let me stop because I just put the earbuds on. I want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, very good. Okay. All right. All right. And that's okay. That's all right. We we know you're here. Thank you for coming on board, Ms. Carol. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so going back to this, um, your words become your destiny. What does that mean? Somebody tell me, what does it mean my words become my destiny? Somebody, you can type it in the chat feature or you can come off the mute. What does it mean my words become my destiny? Anybody want to take a shot at that? My words become my destiny. I'd like to say something, Makia. Right, um, okay, go right ahead, huh? So my um, I tell my boys all the time that you know whatever you say is going to come to fruition. So watch what you say. So mm -hmm. and it's it's time and time again. So and even in a positive way, whatever. And we were going through the trenches of a really challenging year this year. And we and we came together and we became became positive and things start to rapidly become more positive and things came to fruition. Like I didn't have a car, but but I got a car with um just and and okay. it came about. I now I now got a I got a new job. It's a small job, but I got a job. So um but yeah, so they see through my life that I am saying positive words. I try to redirect them to say positive words. They're young, so I understand, but they have to learn. But through me modeling what I want them to be, I have yeah, I have to watch myself. But yes, it, your yeah. word, whatever you think and your words and actions become your destiny. It's right in front of your face. Man, I'm telling you right now, y'all should go down to the react button down there, hit them emojis and show her some love. That's powerful, what she just said. Seriously. That is so powerful thank you malika i appreciate that because you know why you are giving your kids a gift thank you for those of you who are showing her some love right now for sharing that you are giving your kids a gift because we're going to have negativity around us all the time and the key we have to understand when we're trying to pursue things in life is, is that we have to think about the our, our mindset and how are we programming our, ourselves to think what you're talking about makila makia i'm sorry is the um what they call please write this down i'm going to give it to you in the chat feature um there's a name for it i'm just gonna put it in, in the chat feature it's called the law of attraction and, and what the law of attraction is that your words can actually become what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy it's been proven through research that when a person goes to a job interview and they're optimistic and they feel good, it's not a guarantee that they'll get the job, but their chances of getting it are exponentially higher because that interviewer feels that person's energy. But if I go in pessimistic, bad attitude, that interviewer feels that too, you know? And so what you're giving your children is a gift because you're manifesting things by your words. I'm really proud of you. I'm just meeting you. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, I'm proud of you. And for those of you who will put those things, other words out there, the things you speak of your life, thank you, Tamara, have an impact on the way you live. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Absolutely, scripture there. I mean, seriously, all this stuff is so true. And I'm gonna tell you something before I dive into this content. The man that's teaching you today would not be teaching you if it wasn't for words. If it wasn't for words, I wouldn't be here teaching this because I had to learn some things, all right? I had to learn some things, all right? And so uh, about uh, the way that, I'm, uh, you know, you know and the, the way I see things and view things, because I wasn't always optimistic, okay? Um, 
and, and it helped me with my current life. So thank you, Rhonda, for putting that in there as well. The works on reminders, be saying what's your name in chat. She's going to be saving the chat uh, for Pathstone. And um, I would encourage you to do the same for yourself. You can go up, there's the three buttons at the top. You click on that and you can hit save chat. That way you can have a record for yourself that you were here and present and um, and all of that, okay? And so, yep. Yeah. So we appreciate that. So anyway, let's go back in into the presentation because there's some things. So the right, bottom line is your words um, uh, uh, create uh, your destiny. The, I love this quote. It says that the greatest discovery of my generation is a person can change their lives by changing their attitudes of mind. That's William James, a Harvard researcher. So that's again, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that's 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 a statement right there. Our lives can change by changing our attitudes. It's powerful when you think about it, right? And then one last little quote, your future success is hidden in your daily routine. And this is gonna be the springboard to our presentation because it's what you do daily that produces the outcomes you want later. So when you look at this quote, you may say, I want a car, right? Like Ms. Jones shared, shared a little earlier, you know, or I want a house, or I want, you know, whatever it is I may want for my family. It could be anything, right? What we then have to do is understand when we say those things, what we're doing in essence is we're going into the future. You know, we're going into the future. And by going into the future, what I mean is that we're going into the future and saying, I want whatever this thing is, but now it's what I do every day to get there. I want a good job. Okay, good. It may mean that I'm not starting off with the biggest job in the world, like was mentioned earlier, but I'm starting with a job. And guess what? Job builds upon job. It builds upon job. When I first, um, my first professional job was working in a car dealership and it wasn't, you know, for me, the best job in the world. It just, it was a job. And, and so that wasn't the best. But I started, I was really good at that job. I took my time. I, I wanted, because in my mind, I was thinking, if I do a good job here for these people, even if I leave a year or two down the road, I can get a good reference. So I didn't want to do a bad job because one thing employers are always asking for is references, right? Am I right with that, Ms. Carol? Am I, am I correct on that one? You know? That's Most definitely, what, yes. Yeah. They're you always want to have a good reputation when you go to another position. Absolutely. Or you never know, you might want to come back to an employer. Maybe at one time, yes. you know, mm -hmm. things change and you may want to move to a different employer and then want to come back. You want to always have that open door available. Absolutely. And you know one thing I remember uh, an employer saying, one time an employer was saying that when they, they took a job with someone else and they went back and looked for people to see if they were available. <laughs> because of the reputation that the person had for their work ethic. So now people get promoted in life and then they start looking for you. You know, are you looking for work? So there's so many benefits to it, but it starts in my daily routine. So I'm gonna give you a gift today. And here's the gift. When you work for someone, be your absolute best. Why? You're not just doing it for them, you're doing it for you. They get the benefit of your hard work. They get the benefit of your, but man, when it's time for you to move on or if it's time for you, I've had people that work for me. I knew that they were there for a season. I knew they weren't going to be there forever. I knew it. And then when it came time for them to move on because of their work ethic, their level of respect, the way they treated their job, man, I wrote the most incredible, you know, reference letter that a person could ever ask for. Why? Because of their work ethic because of their, their daily habits in the workplace. So the gift to you is when you're your best, it creates new opportunities. So don't ever like work on a job. I've seen this before, you know, a person works on a job and then they, you know, um, they join a group or a cohort of people that want to speak negatively about that job. And then now I'm being, being, being identified by people who are looking at me a different way. So, so just make sure daily we work those habits. Let me ask you a question. Your question. I'm going to ask this. I'm going to pause it. 
But why do winning teams win? All right. Why do winning teams win? I want to ask, I just want to get your thoughts. You can put in the chat feature or you can come off of mute and tell me. But why do win? Why do why do teams win? Why do people win? What 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 is winning? What is what causes winning to take place? Come on, y'all. You're smart people here. What is it? All right. What causes winning teams? Like my Philadelphia Eagles are winning now. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm bragging about that one because I love my team. All right. But what causes it? Where does this come from? And if you're first coming in, please put your name in the chat feature so we can have you. What are some of the when are some of the disciplines that people have that seem to win? You know, what what is it? What causes that? Is it work ethic? Is it discipline? Come on now, there you go. Strong work ethic and teamwork. Communication is the main, this, that's it. The way I communicate to people. Come on, there we go. Perseverance. That's what I'm saying. If anybody wants to come off the mute, you can talk to me. Discipline, communication, motivation. Look at all the stuff y'all popping in here. That's why I love doing these workshops with you. Y'all are phenomenal. Y'all phenomenal people, man. Y'all get this. You know? And, and here's what I want you to understand. Please hear me when I'm saying this. Because coaches are consultant. I'll be speaking at next two weeks. I'll be at the National Association of Workforce Development Professionals. I'm known in this industry. <laughs> I've been doing this stuff a long time. I speak at big conferences and everything. So I know what I'm talking about this stuff. You know, positivity, consistency, drive. Here's what I want you to get. The same attributes it takes for a team to win are the same attributes we need to have. Perseverance, discipline, work ethic, communications. We need to have the right people around us. When I work with young people, I have a quote, but it applies to adults too. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. One of the things that helped me stay married for 30 years and I surrounded myself with several people who, who decided they want to stay married. <laughs> and guess what? We just motivate each other all the time. When things get a little tough, we lift each other up. When things are good, we celebrate. You know, that's how I've been able, that's how I was able to do this. Why? You know, I'd work on it. I had to have a team of people. I had to be disciplined. I had to be perseverance. Yeah. You know, all these different things. So again, if you're just coming in, please put your name in the chat feature. Thank you for those who are doing that. So that's, that was, I just want you to understand that. So let's go into some of this because they really believe that they can <laughs> and they have a plan. So your first thing is write down, I need to have a short-term and a long-term plan. Okay. All right. I'm just going to, I need, you put in your notes, a short-term and long-term plan. Short-term plan, I should look at finding employment. Like Ms. Jones said a little earlier, it's not what she necessarily wants, but she's working. Work begats work. If I don't work, then I can't move on to the next level of work. You know, see, so, so some people say, I don't want to work that job. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But what I want you to understand is that I didn't start off working for a, a top medical diagnostics firm years ago, Abbott Laboratories. I, di I didn't work out. I didn't start out working for them. I just started off in a car dealership. Right? How many? How many of you ever heard of Urban Magic Johnson? Just give me some type of emoji, if you have. We know Magic is. If you know Magic is, it, in the chat feature, say yes or whatever. You know, if you if 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 you if you know who he is, I'm sure some of you heard him. If you're just coming in, um, please put your name. Yes, okay. So Y'all know who Urban Magic Johnson is, right? We know his team. He's one of the owners of the Los Angeles Dodgers that just won the World Series. He's the part owner of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now the Washington Commanders. He's buying up all these teams. But he tells his story when he was 13 years old. He was 13. And there was this very successful entrepreneur in this town. He tells people, I've always wanted to be successful in business more so than basketball. That's a story for a lot of our young people right there. And so he said, I want to be successful in, in basketball. And so, um, excuse me, in, in business. 
So this is a very successful man, but he was wondering at 13, 14, how can I work for this guy? So you know what he did? He showed up at his office. <laughs> he literally showed up at his office. And he said, are you hiring? And they looked at like, what is this little boy talking about? He want a job. <laughs> he like, well, you know, he said, no, actually, I'm 13. <laughs> so he showed up and they said, he said, I'll do anything. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want to work here. And they said, little boy, you're too young. Leave. Next week, he showed up again. I'm not, this is not a best practice. I'm telling you, this is a magic story. I'm not, this is not what I'm telling you to do. I'm just sharing you how the power of determination. He showed up again. And the person said, I told you we're not hiring 13 year olds. He said, okay. A month later, he showed up again. <laughs> now keep in mind, this was many, many years ago. All right, you just nowadays, you, just, you don't see a lot of this, but. And so the fourth time he showed up, the owner was there. He said, you're not just going, you're just not going to stop showing up till you work for me, right? He said, yes. You know what he told him? Here's $2, $3 back then, 70s. Go get me some donuts and coffee. He said, you're my donut and coffee man. <laughs> he said, I want you to come here every day for an hour. You're going to give me donuts and coffee. You're going to sweep the floor. You're going to clean the bathrooms. And today, he's a multi-billionaire. He, he owns sports teams. He had a great sports career, but he started getting donuts right, and coffee and sweeping and cleaning bathrooms. People think that, don't, don't despise small beginnings. It, it's like just getting started. It's like, it's like a muscle. You get going and then more opportunities begat opportunities. And so that's a story of someone we all know. And, 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 and I'll tell you something, I, I've patterned my life. So what you see today, you see me here, but I didn't start here. I had to work on to get to where I am with this today. So we're going to talk about job search and we're going to talk about um, so just some basic, basic tools. Because, but the foundation of a good job search, please get this, is the desire to achieve something. I want to buy a house, I want to buy a car. I want a better quality of life. I want this, I wanna do that. See, if I don't have those things in mind, job search is not that important to me. But when I do say, I want a house, I want a car, I wanna travel, I wanna have a better quality of life, then all of a sudden it's because, so even if you had a very high paying job and you're laid off and you displaced or whatever, it doesn't matter your position, that's a part of this call. It starts with saying, I want to accomplish something, okay? So that's what you want. So self-analysis, the first aspect of a job search is knowing what you're good at. What kind of job do I want to search for? What skills do I possess, all right? So take a moment, because I'm not here to lecture, I'm here to train. Write down at least one or two things you're good at. Just write it down on your pad. If you feel comfortable, write it in the chat feature. But I'm gonna shut my mouth, which is almost humanly impossible, for two minutes, because this is a workshop. And I want you to write those things down. And if you feel compelled, all right? If you feel compelled, then share with us in the chat feature. So keep, again, bear in mind, we're talking about your winning job search strategies. One is self-analysis, the other is networking, and the other is tools that we can use to search for employment. But it starts with self-analysis as the foundational building block because here's the deal. I need to know why I'm going to get up every day and do this job search. There's something that has to motivate me to do this on a consistent basis. All right. So I'm going to stop here, pause, right? And then again, if you feel like compelled to write in the chat, to the chat page, okay? All right, Makisha, good. I'm an accounting professional. Very good. That's good. If you feel compelled to share with us, go right ahead. Okay? Just write down one thing. Mm.
you want to type in the chat feature with some of your, you know, what, what are your, what are you good, what you're knowing, what you're good at, what kind of job you're looking, what skills do I possess? You know, you can type it, you can type it in the chat feature. If not, that's okay. You can keep it confidential. Another minute and we'll jump back in. Okay. So self-analysis, just to kind of get us going, um, self-analysis, um, it's really, I call it the foundation because a lot of times we do searches on different things and we don't necessarily kind of look at, you know, why am I doing this? Like what is, what, you know, tech savvy, quick study, okay, good, good, thank you, I appreciate that. Yep, mathematical skills, boy, are those needed today. That's that's good skills, Come on, very good. And so, um, so we need to like, like I, 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 I'm a journal, I journal stuff. So like, here's my little journal. Even if you had like this, a journal, you can write these things down, like what you just did. And you can remind yourself. Matter of fact, that's what we started this whole process off with. That was different than before was a journal. We asked everyone to get one. So I'm not sure if everybody got one, but you know, the journaling is really good because what you do is you write down what it is you're going to do, what you want. So now every day I can look at what I want. You don't just want it in your head. If you haven't gotten, well, you can go to like CVS and get one of these for like four bucks. It's just not that expensive. But it, because what you want to do is you want to have a track record. You know, let's say, you know, today you write down, you know, uh, I'm going to send out a bunch of resumes or you got your, you got, you, you're clarified what it is that you'd want from a self-analysis standpoint. So now you can always flip to that and see, okay, this is why I'm sending out three resumes today. This this vision that I have is the motivation behind it. You know, and so the best way I can describe it is any of you ever been in a situation where you were, were going down the road and you saw a sign that says coming soon. And on that sign was a picture of something, all right? Have anyone ever experienced that before? It could be a building coming soon, a school coming soon, a restaurant. You don't see it. Yes, there we go. What are they telling you with that coming soon? Come on, y'all, think about it. What, what are they communicating to us with coming soon? Think about it. What are they saying? Coming soon. Something is in the making. Well, you're, I tell you, you got this, Miss Grove, no doubt about it. Yes. Something is in the making. This journal 
is you saying something is in the making. This is your picture. Just like that sign is telling us that that restaurant is going to be there. And you may say, oh, I'm interested in going to that restaurant once it gets here. Or that, you know, whatever it may be, convenience stores being built. Man, I can't wait till that store comes. So I'm going to go buy stuff from there. This is your way of writing down coming soon. <laughs> you're writing your goal. You're writing your ambitions in there. All right. So I love some of these that you place down. Hard worker, customer service. You can never go wrong with customer service. There's always a need. Accounting is another thing. There's always a need. And then some of you put more of the softer skills. I'm analysis. I'm good at teaching myself how to do new things very quickly. That is, uh, Ms. Santiago, a skill that employers are longing for because they want people to be self-sufficient. You see? And so that's a skill you would want to put on a resume. You would on, you want to make sure that is on a resume. And then, you know, even with Tamara, what you have here, tech savvy, quick study, these are things that you want the future employer to see before they see you. So that should be in what's called the capabilities aspect of your resume. And you have that on there in your hard worker, all those things, you know, seem like something you would just do in an interview. But the reality is you want them to be on your um be on your uh, resume before you go into the interview. That's a whole nother workshop, but so, yeah. So let's move on for time's sake. All right, so what kind of job do I want to search for and what skills? So those, you, this self-analysis is very important. So there's two types of self-analysis type of things that we can focus on. Number one is write these down. One is transferable skill sets. And the other is something we call passion pathways. Because some of you may be saying, coach, I don't necessarily know what I'm good at. OK, and so what we're going to do today is kind of lay a foundation for you to continue to work on with the hopes that you can use this at some point to build upon. And let's take the, the first one is transferable skill sets. So transferable skill sets are what every worker gains from each career experience, including volunteering, internships, freelance and more. They are skills that you can use in any professional setting. So. They're transferable skills. It could be interpersonal skills, communications, teamwork, leadership, self-management skills, drive, um, time management uh, and creativity, research, time management, organize. Or they could be um, math, we talk about math, math, uh, mathematical, analytical, those type of things, all right? They're interpersonal skills, exploring and implementing skills, self-management skills, all right? And so let me go back one. And understand, you can gain this from a job that you had before. You can gain this from your volunteering. So let me give you an example of a, of a transfer. So for instance, let's say you go to, I'm just going to give you an example. You go to church, right? You attend a church. I'm just going to use this as, as a simple example. And the pastor asks you to, could you help me build a youth ministry? And they see they see something in you that you could potentially help them. Now keep in mind, I'm, I'm not I'm just trying to show, show a volunteer example. And then so you say, well, okay, I'll do that. And then what you do now is you go research what it takes to build a youth ministry. You go and start thinking about, okay, what kind of volunteers do I need to help me build this? Uh, what kind of Finances are we going to need because the pastor may say to you, okay, let's get, give me a budget of what you're going to need to do this thing. So you say, oh, we need whatever it may need to do that. Then you start recruit, recruiting people. You may have them fill out a simple application to help you build out this youth ministry. You may have to purchase um, furniture to have a room if there's little kids. I'm just giving you know, it could be anything. The point I'm making is, my friends, that's management skills. <laughs> so you may say to yourself, I've never seen myself as a manager. Well, guess what? Those are management skills. And so I can say on a resume that, you know, I had to recruit people. I had to do applications. I had to had a budget, you know, to be able to build out this thing. And what I'm trying to say to you is, you may not have seen that as a transferable skill, but I just told you that it is. 
because it's the same kind of skill that someone would want you to do on the job, you know, as a possibly as a manager. So transferable skill sets are just one way. Okay. And just keep in mind, you can get them through a variety of different freelance basically means you own your own business and you know, you're freelancing, you're, you're um, interacting with people where they're paying you for whatever the service may be. Maybe you do hair care, maybe you do whatever photography. All right. So that's one way. And all right. So tra transferable skill sets. The other way is something we call passion pathways. My first book is entitled, uh, <clears throat> how to find your passion and make a living in. I wrote that book 20 years ago and it's still around today. All right, I'm author of nine books right now. And, um, and so passion pathways are the gifts, talents, abilities that we possess naturally that can be turned into potential jobs. Two critical pathways are one, one's called lifetime infatuation, work you have a natural affinity towards or the influence of others someone you learn under or worked for, okay? All right, so like for instance, Coach D does speaking, training, and coaching today, but I sat up under people like Dr. Miles Monroe, Zig Ziglar, I can go down the line of the people who helped me become what I am today. That's the influence of others. But lifetime infatuation, you know, could be, well, my mom told me, I say this in a funny way, but my mom told me as a little boy, and she did, I'm not making this up, she, every time I would run my mouth or say something smart to her, and if any of you got any kids that say smart things, you'll be able to relate to this. Instead of saying, boy, you have a big mouth, you're getting on my nerves, this is what my mom used to say. One day, I'm, I'm not making this up, <clears throat> one day you're going to use that mouth to make a difference. <laughs> There's some parenting suggestions in there. <laughs> Instead of getting upset at your child, flip it and tell them how they're going to use whatever they're frustrating you with as a gift. <laughs> One day you're going to be a lawyer because you debate all the time. <laughs> and you have kids that debate, you know what I'm talking about. All right. And um, so uh, lifetime infatuation, since I've been a little boy, I've had to get the gas. I just turned it into a career. All right. So so I want to take a moment and, and uh, ask you, what are you naturally good at doing? Like, you may not have even taken a class for it, of course. But what are you just good at doing? Some of you are great cooks, I'm sure. Some of you can fix a car and you never even read a book. You just look at the car, you know what to do. Or some of you can do hair care. Some of you can do what? Tell me what you're naturally good at. I just love to hear some of that. OK, go right ahead. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I would say um, just find um, something I'm naturally good at. I'm finding out that I'm naturally good at actually is uh, finding good in places where my negative thoughts try to take over. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Yep. There it is. Yeah. And so, yep. There you go. Very good. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Anybody else? What are we? You know, I think I saw a few of the um, few things pop up in the chat feature. Cooking. Okay. Yep. Music. Okay. You know, some people offer online music classes. My daughter takes piano lessons online <laughs> and we pay that lady every week for her to take that lesson. You know, cooking, oh, there's always opportunities for cooking. You know what I mean? One of, one of the uh, young men that, that work with us down here, his mother, I'm in Florida, I have a place in Florida, we have a, uh, in Delaware. His mother is coming over from Jamaica and he's already purchased, not purchased, but rented a facility to open up their a restaurant for Jamaican food. <laughs> so so he's like already already doing it, you know what I mean? And um it's so yeah. And so um so we have these different things. I'm good at budgeting. There you go. Look there you go. So what happens is you can take that skill set and you can say what are career opportunities within that? It could mean more a little bit more education. I mean, no, these are different things. So you, you don't, I want to add that into this presentation because when we talk about job search, maybe we can be, find, we can look for opportunities to search in career paths that, that are non-traditional. If that, you know, we have the skill and ability to do it, it can improve it to a, an employer. All right. So, so lifetime infatuation that I, people have had a lifetime infatuation for cars, have worked on as a hobby, may qualify to pursue work in the auto mechanic field. 
individuals who were influenced by a manager who mentored them while working at a factory may qualify to pursue entry-level management work as a result of what they learned working under a leader. These are just a few. There's a bunch of different pathways that I have, and I don't have time to go through all of them. Uh, one of them, I give you an example, is frustration. And I always say that, what's something that frustrates you that you want to fix, you know? And so people find careers, they're frustrated with the way people manage the money, they go into finances. They're frustrated with, I don't know, teens acting a certain way, they go into youth service. I mean, it just, it could be anything that you say, I want to try to fix into something. If you're tired of the way families are going, they go into family therapy and counseling, okay? So keep that in mind as you're doing your job search. What am I, what, what are some things that I'm naturally good at? And maybe I can look at non-traditional pathways, okay? All right? So you've already kind of done that already. So we're not going to do this exercise, okay? So let's take a look at a few things. And we don't have much time left. But um, if you're near a computer, I'm going to give you a moment. I don't know if you are, you know, if you're looking at me on a computer, if you can open up another tab. But I want to talk about tools, different uh, 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 sites that you can look at and work with. One of them is called jobindeed.com. Uh, now, let me clarify, and I believe I have a slide in here with this. One of the, the primary jobs of Pathstone is to help you with that at the various job centers. So that's, that's like one of your primary tools right there, you know, is to work with the various uh, career coaches and individuals who work through the organization to help you. But I always tell people, like, folks can only help you if you're willing to be helped. You know, like they have the skills and they have the tech the, and, the, and the understanding, but they can't help if like a person is not willing to work with them, all right? And so, um, yeah. So I'm gonna take, give you about two minutes if you have access to a computer or if you're on your cell phone, just go to indeed.com and look around. Look around. Let me give you about three minutes, okay? And then when we come back after three minutes, I'm going to um, ask you some questions. So go, go to indeed.com. All of you may not be able to. If you're not, just write it down and just take a look at it. Take a look at what it's saying. Take a look at its structure, you know, because it's a great tool. So let me do this. I'm going to pause the recording and take a look. And, and what's really important to understand with this, again, this, you notice when you went on, it's trying to get you to sign in. Well, you have to create your own Indeed account. It only takes a minute to do. It's real simple, real easy. It, email, passcode, and upload your resume. And what, what's nice about this tool is, once again, it starts to send employers your way because employers will go search the database, you know, for these resumes, you know. And again, let me just clarify and, 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 and default to the fact that you're gonna do the same thing working with Pathstone, okay? So, um, but Indeed, anybody anybody ever use Indeed.com? Anybody ever use it as a tool? Yeah. Oh, you've been using it? All right, talk to us about what your thoughts are. Did you think it's a good tool? You know, I've, you know, I've, most people tell me it's pretty good, but you know, open to hear other thoughts. Okay. Do you find do they are you do you typically find that you have to go search yourself? Uh, some interviews. Okay, got you. Okay, all right. Because a lot of times, what I'm hearing people say is that you know they they end up getting multiple interviews, depending on obviously how the resume is structured and all of that. So it varies. So anybody else ever use it before besides Akisha? Anybody else to use it? Well, if, if you haven't used it, I would encourage you to, okay? Uh, I'm, I would encourage you to. So let, let's do this real quick because and don't go anywhere. Don't jump off. Don't go back out and come back in. I always at an hour on virtual calls, like to take about a two, three minute break to get our eyes off the computer. Then we're going to come back and we're going to wrap this up, okay? So again, don't physically leave because according to these, you know, we want to keep you on. And um, and uh, but I will give you about two, about three minutes, just to take your eyes off the computer, stretch break, and then we're going to start it up again. So it's twelve o'clock. We'll start again at twelve o'clock. All right.
and I'll see you in just a few moments. But again, don't 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 go out and try to come back in. Just stay on. And I'm just gonna be sitting right here. All right, my friends, we're about to wrap this up. A few more things to share with you. I am here in Florida and it is a major rainstorm. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it's like pouring. Man, it's living in this state is crazy. It's always rain, man. It never ends. So it's the number one pure, pure saxophone. Well, that's changed. It's really not number one anymore. But we'll find jobs in most in places most won't all levels of employment and one-click application. It's pretty easy, all right? So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, this is the next one, is LinkedIn. How many of you have a LinkedIn account? This, if you're in the chat feature, tell me, I'm going to stop this for a moment and come back to it, but how many of you have a LinkedIn account? If you do, tell, tell me what it is. I'm just curious. In the chat feature. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you why you need to get one. All right. In the chat feature, I'm pulling mine up because I want to share mine with you all. All right. I get this to pop up. Yeah. There's Siri popping up. I'm going to put mine in here so you can see it. Nine. Okay, I do. Oh, nope. Okay. Good. Okay, there's a few of you do. All right. I'm going to put mine in so you can know that's my LinkedIn account if anybody wants to connect with me <laughs> on LinkedIn. Now, let's go back to LinkedIn. I see a few of you do, but hopefully after the day, all of you will. Um, 90% of major companies place jobs on LinkedIn. All right. You can tell LinkedIn what kind of job you want in, and the area you're looking for it and will send you jobs as they open. So some I get I, I test it out because I just I'm not looking for anything, but I put in certain job types of opportunities to see I, every day I get jobs. Every day I get emails. Every day. Virtual jobs, live jobs, things like that. LinkedIn groups are some of the best networking opportunities in the country. So for instance, let's say someone mentioned earlier accounting. Well, there's you know a lot of accounting groups on LinkedIn that post jobs, some live, some virtual, but there's a lot of them that do. Yeah. And so, um, so LinkedIn is really one of the, probably the primary tools now out there. Um, and people are using it a lot to find job opportunities. I noticed one young man that we were um, working with and coaching and mentoring that landed a really good job in the sports arena by networking on LinkedIn, literally networking. And once he graduated, stepped right into a good job. So that's another thing. Yep. And then thank you, Rhonda, for that. Another is obviously the period, a, 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 a PA career link and, and is online. Yep. There you go. And so um, that's what I was talking about working with Pasto and that information is sitting right there. And the career links are, like I said earlier, the primary place you want to go. I'm just giving you some other options as well. Thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it. You're Let welcome. That link. Yeah, and please, everyone, take a look at that link and, 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 and see, keep in mind, let's go back to what I said a few moments ago. Why am I doing this? That's what's going to motivate us to do it. The why is what's going to motivate us, okay? All right. Coach D, we have a hands up. I don't know if you can see it in your. Yeah, I think his hand is up, okay. but he's been up for a while. <laughs> I think okay. he, he did, yeah, we, we, yeah, I believe. Unless, do you have anything you want to share? I don't think, last time I spoke to him, I put the hand down. Like you. I don't know who it is. It just has a number. That I don't have their names. Yeah. So uh, he gave me his name earlier, but I just. I, I can't, okay. Can't, yeah. But uh, yeah. But I can't. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry about that. I'm having some technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, Donna no, you're probably fine. just wanted to make sure that if you had something to say, we left you. <laughs> yeah, sorry. yeah. I, 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 yeah, and um, is, uh, is that Noel? Yeah, no, Noel. Yes, that's what, that's, that's, that's what it is. I don't know. I'll put your name in. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, good. All right. So yeah, this 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 sometimes that could be weird like that. So all right. So um. So LinkedIn, write it down, linkedin.com. We don't have time to go to it today. And then also click on the link that Rhonda put in there about career, um, you know, the PA career links. And um, we'll, you know, make sure that we, um, you know, Ms. Carol put in there about that. And we'll, we'll, that's another resource as well. All right. And uh, so take time to analyze that. And then as we wrap up this up, uh, Coming down to home search, you know, volunteer, get involved. I'll tell you something. Most, please write this down as a note, and that's because I've seen it time and time again. Most employment opportunities today are are, are um we, we, we are achieved through networking. It really is the old thing of it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> And it's not who you know, it's who knows you. And one way to for that to happen is just to, just to avail yourself to people. You know, we I always tell folks all the time, I, uh, greatness can't excel in isolation. You know, we got to get out and meet people and, and, and all that. And I know sometimes some of us will say, well, I can't do that. I have kids, I, you know, things like that. I have kids too, and I, I get out, <laughs> I make sure. Because I can do better for my kids and my family by advancing my network of people. So any of you out there pretty good at networking? Any good networkers out there that have some tips that you want to share with anyone about networking? Any of you good at that or, or teach it or anything like that? What do you think about networking that you may want to share? Anyone take, anyone take the time to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, networking is is really the best way to describe it is getting involved, going out and meeting with various people, organizations across the board with the hope of a, a good relationship built on reciprocity, which means to, to, that we're helping each other. You know what I mean? It's not it's not one sided. All right. It's 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 both of us. So you meet somebody, one of the things you want to make sure uh okay. when you're networking, um, right, uh, is that it's not about just you. It's what value you can bring to somebody. Okay. It's the value that you can bring to someone. Okay. And so um, you know, if you're not familiar with it too much one online yeah 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 okay i get that okay yep and so what you would when from an introvert perspective i get what you're saying because uh, my son is one too and i've been working with him is that i told him you know what i'm telling him right now is connect your your interacting with people to the bigger picture and you don't have to go into huge environments. It can be one-on-one, -on -one, somebody that you meet. Some people are more comfortable talking to one individual than individuals in a group setting, you know? And so like, for instance, believe it or not, this is gonna come as a surprise, is comfortable as I am speaking and training, networking is something I gotta work on. And what I've done to help myself is, I go in asking questions of the person about themselves. Now, another way too, if you're not one that goes out in the public, just look for online networking. There's a lot of online networking tools out here now where people are meeting and having meetups and greeting all that virtually. So now you don't have to physically be at a location. You know, you can meet somebody or connect with folks online and you don't even have to physically go. So. My ultimate is I want you to physically go because it's good to meet people face to face. I was just at an event yesterday and met a bunch of people at this event, but it really was boiling down to um, uh, asking questions, not not asking for anything, but asking questions. 
Yeah. So, um, so networking is a powerful, powerful tool. And it's one that if we're looking at trying to achieve a particular outcome, right, in our lives and career, uh, we need the network. Coach you know? David, yes. another, mm-hmm. thing with, another thing with the networking is yeah. sometimes, you you know, maybe you're volunteering and you're working with somebody and they get mm-hmm. to know you. They know your interests. They know your likes. They know you as yeah. a person. That yep. person goes home, say, for Thanksgiving dinner. And their brother is maybe, you know, a CEO somewhere and says, you know, I just wish I could find somebody to fill this job. We've had it posted. Nobody's, you know, putting in for it. Yep. And that friend, that, you know, that person, you know, can say, well, geez, I volunteer at the soup kitchen or I, I know this person mm-hmm. from such and such. And they could say, you know, the brother will say, well, give me that person's number. I'll reach out to them. You might yep. get a job without even applying for it. Without even way. applying for it. That, that's, you just nailed what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's it. You know. Not all jobs are posted. That all jobs are posted. And what that person becomes, because you, you Ms. Carol, you could have said it any better. The, that person becomes an advocate because they're of their familiarity with you. Right. You, you see, see, now they know because they know you. And that's why I made that statement a little earlier. You can't achieve great, greatness in isolation. You know, it doesn't even be greatness. It's hard to achieve much of anything in isolation. You know what I mean? I, I can't, I, I can't push, push a dream forward if I'm not meeting people, if I'm not connecting with people. Now, let me clarify something because I'm big on this because of what just was said. Some people are introverted. I know that's hard. I'm, I'm not going to say that's easy. But what we're saying here is you know that it could be beneficial. As was Ms. Carol was just saying a moment ago, somebody could meet you and then tell their brother who's an executive about you. And next thing you know, you, you got an opportunity to do something because of the fact that you were involved that you're engaging with that person. So keep that as something in your tool test. Networking is of critical importance. Don't be introvert. Try your hardest not to let being, being interviewed to stop you. Start with one person, two people. Like you said, volunteering at the soup kitchen, wherever you're meeting people. And that within itself can create opportunities. So with that being said, I just want to wrap this up. We are done time-wise. I don't want to go much longer. So think about that. You know, Zip Recruiter is another tool. I'm not going to go much time into that, but you know, but look at the PA career link, you know, and we're concluding by make sure to do self analysis, focus on transferable skill sets, and use online tools, but most importantly, pass on. Use them because they're a great resource. That's all I have for today. I hope this information was helpful. Um, we're done time wise, but before we go, I want you to help me out by putting one thing in the chat feature that you learned today. One. All right. Each person. Just go to chat. And some of you don't have chat access. But for those that you do, I want to make sure you're walking away with something. Because the purpose of these trainings is to give you some tools to help you in your job search, in your life, and career. Your words are your destiny. Very good. That's all I'm looking for. What did you learn today? Thank you for that. All right. Love to see some other ones pop up in here because you got to walk away and I'm going to give you a walk away strategy. Take one thing that we talked about today and work on that one thing. Is it my transferable skill sets? Is it, you know, whatever it may be. Is it, you know, networking? Um, what, you know, just, you know, across the board, because if you don't work on it, then this was just a good gathering. <laughs> And I don't want it just to be a good gathering. I want you to advance because of it. Showing up as your best self creates new opportunity. That's very good, Shannon. That's that, 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 there you go. Because when you show up as your best self, people want to connect with you. They want to do things for you, all right? So being your best at work creates new opportunities outside, new job opportunities, letters of support, things of that nature. All right, so, can, can, can I share some? Absolutely, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. I, I learned that, there's still there's still men and women out there that that are still married mm-hmm. for over twenty years, and I love that. Fact. <laughs> well, that's a great story. It's still no. possible. It's still possible to be happy. It's still with, possible, with, man. With, 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 I love that, man. Oh, that, yeah. I just you know I'm so honored by it. So very good. But, okay, right. But thank you for that, man. And networking as a way of net, yeah, volunteering as a way of networking and yeah, friends. Very good. See, this just little things. So listen. Don't keep yourself hidden. You're too great for that. 
You know, go out there and let your light shine. Do it for yourself. Do it for your children. If you got grandchildren, do it for your grandchildren. But also, most importantly, do it because you can. You know what I mean? You you can. You have the ability to do this stuff. And I'm, I'm a little bit over my time, but thank you so much for your time.